This is an example shot from the video encyclopedia of pool shots, a 5 DVD series covering over 750 shots in 50 different categories. This example is from disc 4, which covers all of the topics shown here. We've introduced throw on earlier discs, but let's look at it in more detail here. We've set up these balls so that a narrow miss on the four ball will create a line of centers straight to the pocket. We can verify this by hitting a line of centers hit on this ghost ball. Here it's easy to overcut this shot with clearance between the cue ball and four ball. We can also pocket this ball with a slight overcut aim to the left because throw will push the ball to the right. Here the clear evidence for cut induced throw is actually missing the pocket to the right. Remember with a narrow miss of the four ball, the line of center is head straight to the pocket. However, with cut induced throw, the ball gets pushed to the right. Here we're using a slow stun shot to get the maximum throw effect. If you've doubted throw in the past, hopefully this helps you become a believer now. Here's some more proof. Now the four ball is placed to prevent an overcut. If we hit the three and four balls at the same time, the line of centers go straight to the pocket. So because of cut induced throw to the left, we cannot make the shot without English. We can actually make the shot fairly easily, but we need to use outside English to counteract the effects of the cut. Here's yet another example you can easily try at home to help convince the non-believers out there. We've used the rack to help freeze four balls in a perfect straight line. And we've frozen a fifth ball to the last ball to create a half ball hit with the line of centers straight to the pocket. Now we remove the rack and the last frozen ball. This guarantees a line of centers hit on the three ball with no English. The ball hitting the three ball will also have near stun, creating the largest throw effect. A good rule of thumb for maximum cut induced throw is you get about one inch of throw for every foot of travel, which is about five degrees. Here the object ball went about four inches to the right after about four feet of travel. But remember, this is maximum throw for a slow stun shot half ball hit. Now let's look at spin induced throw with a straight on shot. With no English, the ball heads straight up table. Here's 25% English. With about 50% English, we get the maximum spin induced throw. And with maximum English, we still get spin induced throw, but it's a lot less than with the other amounts of English. Again, more English doesn't always give you a greater throw effect. Now let's look at the effect of speed on spin induced throw. All of these shots will be at 50% English where the throw was maximum before. As with cut induced throw, you generally get more spin induced throw at slower speed. So again, maximum spin induced throw occurs at about 50% English and slow speed. Here's an example where we can use cut induced throw or spin induced throw to help make a shot. The 13 ball is set up next to the 2 ball so that if we narrowly miss the 2, we miss the pocket to the right. We can verify this by hitting the double frozen ghost ball along the line of centers. With ball in hand, one way to make the shot is to throw it in with cut induced throw. Here the cut to the left throws the ball to the left into the pocket. We can also throw it with spin, in this case right English throws the ball to the left. When you can't avoid cut induced throw, you can at least limit it with speed. Here the line of center is through the 7 and 9 sends the 9 into the pocket. However, when we hit the 4 ball first, the cue ball will push the 7 ball to the right, causing the 9 ball to miss. But we get less throw at faster speed, so we still have a chance to barely make the shot. The amount of throw can vary with ball conditions. And if there happens to be a chalk smudge at the ball contact point, we can get what is called cling, skid, or kick. Here we have a frozen combination that's wired to the pocket. And with typical conditions, if you hit the ball at an angle, the nine ball will throw offline. 
Here we've put a chalk smudge at the ball contact point to show the effects of cling. We get significantly more throw whenever a chalk smudge is on the cue ball or object ball at the contact point. We can get the opposite effect if there's a greasy or a wet spot at the contact point. Here we've placed some saliva at the contact point. This results in practically no throw. On disc 5, we demonstrate a proposition situation where you can use this effect connivingly. Here's a quick preview. With the normal amount of throw, you cannot make this shot. But with some spit placed at the contact point, you can. Let's take a closer look at the effects of outside English on a cut shot. Here we have the four ball frozen to the nine ball in a position that barely allows a line of center's hit to the pocket. Here we're trying to narrowly miss the four and hit the nine ball first. With no English, the nine gets thrown to the right with cut induced throw. With a small amount of outside English, the nine ball still gets thrown to the right slightly. With a little more outside English, we can eliminate throw entirely and have the ball move along the line of centers. With more outside English, the object ball actually throws in the other direction due to spin-induced throw. The amount of outside English that results in no throw is called gearing English. With gearing outside English, the cue ball rolls along the object ball like a meshing gear during contact, with no sideways relative motion. With a half ball hit, the gearing amount of English is about 40%. Some people like to always use outside English with cut shots when English doesn't matter for position. This is a good approach if you can judge the amount of English needed for each cut angle, because you will never need to compensate for throw. However, as we saw before, the amount of throw can vary a lot with the amount of English, so this might not always be the best approach. Now, if conditions are inconsistent or clingy, this might be a good approach even if you don't judge the English perfectly. Earlier we saw an example where we got less cut-induced throw at faster speed, but this effect does not apply to small cut angle shots. Here we've frozen four balls to create about a 15 degree cut on the five ball. The five ball is wired to go to the corner pocket with a line of centers hit. Now we have the full line of balls with the last ball removed to create an accurate hit. Let's see how much cut-induced throw we get with a slow hit. For cut angles less than about 20 degrees, the speed of the shot does not affect the throw. Here we get the same amount of throw even with much faster speed. Now we've changed the angle to about 40 degrees. Here speed does make a difference. At slow speed we get significant cut induced throw. At faster speed the amount of throw is much less. Remember, if the cut angle is less than about 20 degrees, speed doesn't matter. For more information on the entire series, visit dr-dave-billiards.com. There you can view video highlights and complete list of shots from all five discs.